What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and I'm really excited because today is release day. That's right, Sketch 52 is officially here. It's one of the biggest releases that Sketch has done. It's a massive upgrade if you're a Sketch for Mac user. And in today's video, I wanna walk you through my top five favorite features in the new Sketch 52. I like new stuff. You like new stuff? Let's look at some new stuff. gonna open up Sketch 52 and you will see right away most likely that when you open Sketch that uh, you'll notice immediately that there are some interface differences and so that's the first thing there are some interface differences and I really really dig them I like them so our pages and our layer panel look a little bit different now there's specific artboard icons next to each of the individual artboards um, also if you open up a really really busy file that has lots and lots and and lots of different um, uh, layers inside. As you scroll through the layers panel, you get a sticky heading to let you know you're still currently looking at that layer or that artboard, all right? So that's a really nice thing. I just kind of really, really dig that. Um, obviously over in our properties panel, things have changed a little bit. So let's take a look at that as well. Uh, first off, you'll notice that some of the icons have been a little bit more subdued. So now my alignment icons like left and right and distribution. What's also been neutralized are the icons for um, rotating and flipping. Something huge you'll notice, which I'm so excited is finally here, is we've had resizing for a really long time in Sketch for Mac, at least a couple of releases, I think. Um, but now along with resizing, you get a preview box that has animation. And so you can roll over the preview to see exactly how that thing will kind of like pin or resize when you do responsive resizing of the canvas or of the artboard. Thank goodness, this is so awesome. When I have textiles, they are immediately um, visually applied right here in my new appearance panel, okay? So I can open up my appearance panel, and if I have a textile like this header, um, it gives me a visual style right away, and it tells me it's inside the styles folder. So, so I would say everything in general just has a little bit of an improved visual aesthetic to it. Uh, there's a lot more we could go into, but some of those things are just kind of second nature. It, overall, I think it is an aesthetic improvement um, for clarity as I'm working. I wanna be able to know where things are, what they are quickly and efficiently I think this interface overhaul kind of does that okay number two awesome feature on the list in my opinion is better boolean operations this means your boolean or your pathfinder tools they actually work like you expect them to sketch was always kind of notorious for those you know combining of shapes and boolean operations not really doing what we all thought they should or what we are accustomed to them doing but now you can get really really complex you can nest things they do exactly what you would expect uh, a good example is if i kind of uh, zoom in on our icon up here um, that we have we can see we have a shape uh, and another shape and inside um, of those shapes they are, you know, basically there's a smaller shape on top and it is is just sitting there basically like separating, right? It's a combined shape, but we can continue to combine. We can just drag this guy in here and then just say, not, we don't want anything to happen. It's just so much easier to make icons. Um, another good kind of example would be if I was to draw a like a rounded rectangle out and another rounded rectangle. Okay, let's just duplicate that and we'll make this one with our new color picker red and this one will make it a little bit more of a blue and we'll move this one to be on top and we want to unionize them well they're doing exactly what we thought they would do or hope that they would do um, but let's just check look so we have subtraction intersection difference just in general boolean operations were not so great before now they are they really make sense um, they really do exactly what you want to do i will be doing much more icon work here instead of jumping out to another program or platform um, to really do nitty-gritty detail work on icons so really excited about that boolean operations this list is in no particular order, but I will say that number three on the list is one of my favorites so far as I've been using it, and that is data. Sketch has introduced data, which is a way to populate your designs with default data that you can store away. There's some they've already provided for you, but you can create your own sources of data that you can pull from, whether that's images or text or names or countries, whatever you want, you can put into data. And there's also some cool plugins already, like Unsplash, um, and so we can zoom 
zoom in on this design I have going. I have a little card, like a contact, and we're just kind of choosing um, you know, this person's photo and their name and what their role is maybe in the company. You can see all those inside of my kind of card layers over here. Well, you know, we maybe we want to mix it up and that's the wrong image we want. We can pull from the already stock faces data that is uh, populated inside of the new sketch for Mac release, or we can use Unsplash and just do like a random photo. It's already tied into Unsplash, it's gonna go get it. That's really, really nice. Um, or you can set up your own data by simply opening up settings and going to the new data um, tab here. To add data, you're simply gonna hit the add data button and go out to wherever you're storing a simple text file. I have one on my desktop called roles. You can see inside of that text document, it just has line separated titles or roles, um, different data, and they're just separated by line. Um, I'm just going to open that up and it's now put a new data source inside of Sketch for Mac called roles. That way I can go to roles, hit up to data, and I can refresh. Ah, there it is. We can either press it, we can press refresh data, which is command shift D, which is super nice because that just allows me to implement different data. Like I can use faces for here. And now we have like an awesome, like reusable component. Well, how about we take it a step further and turn it into a symbol? Let's call our symbol card. All right. So now our card symbol, we have some different data inside. If I was to press command shift D, while just using the symbol that has all of those, those data sources already pinned to those elements, um, it just changes everything on the fly. And I can just continue to change the data like so. Or what's really cool is over the property panel, you can see data is now built into the symbol overrides. And so if I wanna change the, the data from here, I can either you know refresh the data like that, or I could go and find a random photo on Unsplash, or I can just come back here and refresh it and put what I, the sources are all connected to it. I just keep refreshing. Prototyping is super fast now. I'm really excited. Data's epic. Okay, let's talk about the fourth feature that I'm super in love with in Sketch 52, and that is the text and the layer style improvements that they've put into this new release. Um, you've already seen the text styles a little bit. I wanna talk about layer styles specifically because all of us out there, if we are doing production work, have probably used that little hack where you've created a color and made it into a symbol and had multiple of those different colors, and you have created an icon, and then you've gone through the tedious work of trying to make icons work, which is now fixed in Sketch 52 because Boolean operations are super awesome. And then you masked that color onto the symbol and you're able to override the color. Now, layer styles are going to replace that old way of doing things. It's still there if you want to, but this way is better in my opinion. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna come into my icon and you can see that it's just a shape. Um, maybe we want to turn this into a reusable component, like a logo. I'm just gonna move it all the way to the top. I'm gonna create a symbol called logo. I'm gonna select it and maybe I'll change the color. Maybe I'll make it red and I want to give it a style. I'm gonna create a new style called red and it's going to adopt all of the styles um, that are applied over here in the properties panel. In this case, it's a simple fill of red. Um, and now you can see it has become a layer style and we can immediately change it to any of those other layer styles that we've created. This works in symbol overrides. So now if I have my logo selected, that's a symbol, it's immediately gonna give me the override and ask me what style I want because there is a style applied in the master symbol. And now I don't have to have any sort of extra hack and I can create any sort of other element like this and immediately give it that same layer style. So now if I want to say, okay, I want this layer style of purple, that's not quite the right purple. I want to drop that to a maybe a darker purple or a lighter purple, more like a violet. We can do that. You see our little asterisk kind of shows up and says that's been edited. Let's update that style. Bam, it updates that style everywhere. Now they're easier, they're smoother, there's less steps to do. This is layer styles, bam. Okay, the fifth feature on the list is not necessarily something you're gonna be able to see with your eyes as much experience overall, and that is the increased performance and speed and power of Sketch for Mac in the new 52 release. Sketch was able to tap into Metal, which is gonna increase all the performance overall of the application, and the only way I can really show this to you is to open up the old release of Sketch for Mac. So now we have 51 over here on the left-hand side, and we have 52 
over here on the right hand side. Um, and you'll notice that these are the same identical uh, project. They have lots of repeats of the same design on them. Um, but something in 51 over here you would experience if you had large user flows, lots of artboards on the canvas, is just kind of a bogging down in the, of the speed and performance. And you would see that by kind of moving your artboards around. It was just kind of slow. It started to jerk around a little bit. And it's not necessarily Sketch's fault. Like I think I have like 35 artboards and each of them are big with lots of images. It just slows down. It's just what it does. But over here on the right hand side with 52, you won't get any of this jittering. You're going to get really smooth performance. Now this is a stupid, you know, example because who's going to go in and wiggle around their designs? Nobody most likely, unless you're like me and you're just like having fun like this. But it is an example of how Sketch 52 is going to perform better for you. There's no worse feeling of being able to work really, really fast and being able to do really, really good work, but then the tool is kind of tripping you up. Like you know you could do better. You know you could go faster if the tool could just keep up with you. Well, now the tool can keep up with you even more than it could before. That's a really, really good feeling. The performance overall is something we should always be interested in and always be stoked on, and now it's here. Well, that's it. Those are my top five features in Sketch 52. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and sketch, so maybe stick around. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I hope you guys are having an amazing week, designing amazing things, making amazing things, and enjoying all of these new toys to play with. I'll see you in the next one.